the question is, well, okay, what's the Lyman, what's the escape fraction from quasar? Now, we know that for bright quasar, the escape fraction is unity. Okay, so that helps. But of course, I have to assume that the escape fraction from faint AGM is it's over the unity to get enough UV out. So I assume that the escape fraction from faint AGM that is what? Like it is true for bright AGM, which of course doesn't fall. Okay, so we are, go we are back in terms of uncertainties. We are back to the previous case. We don't know what the escape fraction is. I would argue that in the case of AGN, the situation is slightly better because at least we know there is large leakage in bright quasars, uh, while in the case of galaxy, so far we have not been able to detect any leakage at all. So how quickly do you need to go? Can you just go down to minus 19? Uh, so I integrated those, to get those emissivities, I integrated the luminosity function down to 10 to the minus 2 L star. Okay, so that's probably, it's Cipher galaxies. You don't have to, this is not mini quasars if you want, it's Cipher galaxies. Okay, so yeah. Here, I was looking back at your emissivity chapter, uh, yes. your last point was that Ratio 4.5, uh, 5.5, so back a couple. That one. Yeah. And so you extrapolated out a very flat emissivity yes. then to higher ratio. Yes. So that's in a sense, I would say, optimistic. <laughs> yes. Yes. I don't disagree. I mean, let, let me let me be very clear. Okay. This uh, was center. I wanted to go through this point. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then, well, that's one sigma error bar. So I'm assuming. Now, if I do it, if I cut it out, Okay, and it goes steeper like that. Then I go, I, I reionize hydrogen at 5.2, 5.3, which is just too much. Mm -hmm. So you need this type of level right. to get enough enough UV. Yeah. Them. So if it, within the constraints of saying you know it's AGMs, QSOs. Yes. This is what you need. To do. That's what you need to get to okay. 5.7, which I think is still consistent with a lot of data and is consistent with uh, with W with Planck. Right. Okay, if it drops faster, then it's then I don't have enough UV right there. So in that sense, this is a, an interesting experiment, but it doesn't say much about the relative contributions at higher redshift because you don't have constraints at higher redshift on the AGN contribution to the emissivity. Well, uh, of course, you know the hope is is that people will spend more time looking for <laughs> faint AGN in X-ray data than before. And, and what I like to stress is that the thermodynamics of the AGM is very different when you are dominated by AGM uh, versus uh, galaxies. So, you know, looking at helium-2 realization, spending more time at relatively lower ratios uh, to assess the temperature of the AGM, etc. That's something we can do. So, but here, just a bit. Yes. So, sorry, here you were not considering galaxies at all. Zero so, galaxy yeah. contribution. So That's intense, right. Yeah. So, so you know, which of course it is, it is a bit radical. Sort, sort of trailing quasars you don't see against photons that you don't see escaping. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So, so it is subjective to some extent. But I think it's testable. I think that that that's yeah. that's what my point. Good experiment. Yes. Re related question: You said uh, that we didn't think that these faint AGN exist. Could you yes. summarize the evidence? Why are these a surprise? Uh, well, it would be nice to have some X-ray observer. So first of all, there is still disagreement at redshift of four whether the emissivity is that over that. Is okay. Masters an X-ray point or? Uh, masters, it's it's from Cosmos, and uh, and no, it's uh, it's uh, it's not. Yeah, it's optical. Um, so let me, I thought I had a, so basically this point has been made before. Uh, we don't know, before John Longo, which are those red points, we, we didn't know, if you believe John Longo, uh, but if you don't believe, we still don't know where, where the break in the luminosity function is. Okay, so, so these points is basically a straight power law. You don't know where to cut. So there are huge uncertainties in the emissivity. Now, typically, X-ray observers have some pure luminosity evolution, pure luminosity density evolution. So they extrapolate from low ratio to high ratio uh, to integrate uh, uh, the uh, luminosity function. But in terms of raw data, we have no idea. So, so far, people would cut the luminosity function here. Okay? 
Why? Yeah, so my, my reaction is something. that those are completely normal looking shapes yes. based on lower redshifts. Why would anybody doubt them at that high redshift? That's my question. Yes, I, I agree with you. The, the main point on the left side I knew. So for long time, people were really just concentrating on these three points on the right side. Yes. And then you really don't have much concern. Yeah, that was my no, point. But no, I think no, Sandy, no. Sandy's oh. arguing. You know, why are people skeptical of this, given that it looks like a double checker anyway? What's special about this luminosity function? Why, why it's so controversial? Yeah. So just so I, I, I was just going to ask, um, well, it's related to the same question. This is, what's the, what's the highest redshift where the faint end of the quasar luminosity function is not controversial? Oh, uh, I, would, I don't have the plot there. Uh, I think at z equal 3 or so, you can see the faint end well. 3, 3.5 or so, but not beyond that. 3 actually, not even 3.5. About 3, you don't even see the faint Pierre, if, if Jolongo is right, how would the temperature of the IGM change? Um, it's a good question. So. Uh, I tried. I, I haven't uh, published that. I have a plot. I can show it to you later. It's basically you get higher temperature at higher regions. But it, it, it doesn't on any region. Uh Somewhat, but it does not produce a perfect fit. But uh, but I have to think about what I've done carefully. Uh, but yes, you, you get extra heating from early heating to early heating. So look that's at, look at the other way around. Is the evidence that the IGM is too hot evidence that Jamal is right? Uh, I think that's that's uh, TBD. That's that's what the theorists are going to do over the next two years. That's my prediction. So any more questions for Piero and or Piero and Martin together? I was wondering. <laughs>